introducing the Amazon EC2 container service. A highly scalable, high performance container management service. Yeah, you can manage containers at any scale. You can launch them, you can terminate them to clusters of EC2 instances. You can run tens of thousands of containers with built in versioning for deployment and rollback. We get optimized scheduling, so you can schedule your containers for optimal placements. You get per container resource requirements. And you can ensure high availability with what we call isolation policies. Basically, that means you can deploy sets of containers to separate availability zones to ensure that your application has the high availability that it requires. It also improves resource efficiency. You can run a mix of containers over instances. Uh, you can improve that resource utilization really by also mixing long and short running tasks. And of course, as always, there's a simple API with which you can integrate. You get centralized cluster visibility and control. It integrates with Docker repositories. And you can extend it with um, existing or custom scheduler, such as, uh, for example, the Mesos scheduler, if that's what you want. But of course, none of this is true unless we can give you a demo of it. So I'd like to invite Paul Duffy, head of product manager, managed marketing in stage, to give you a demo of the new EC2 container service. Thanks, Werner. Thank you, Werner. Good morning. So I'm really happy to be here today to give you a demonstration, a short demonstration of EC2 container service. And in this demonstration, we're going to show how we can use EC2 container service to deploy a reasonably complicated distributed application using Docker containers across a cluster of EC2 instances. So we're going to start off by listing the clusters that we've got defined with the service. And right now, we have just one cluster, a default one. So we'll describe that cluster to see the resources that we've got in it. And right now, we have a set of R3 instances, these are standard Amazon EC2 memory optimized instances. For the application that I'm going to deploy, I want to also have some C3 instances in this cluster. So we're going to launch a bunch of C3 instances, which will also become part of that cluster. So I'll take a few moments for those to launch. While that happens, I want to tell you a few other things about the service. So we provide you with an AMI that's ready to go with the Docker daemon, with the EC2 container service agent, and you've got lots of customized options there as well. We're also building a cluster here that is heterogeneous. So it has a mixture of both R3 instances and C3 instances, because I need that mix of capabilities to run the different parts of my application. And then a few words about the nature of the application that we're going to show. It's one that lets end users upload an audio clip, perhaps of someone saying hello in English. And then it takes that audio clip, stores it in Amazon S3, of course. And then using queuing and some backend audio processing we have using a Redis cluster to store metadata, it ultimately takes that, has it translated, so the hello becomes a Mandarin Chinese hello that the user can get. So we'll start deploying the various bits of that application. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is register a task with the cluster that we've got defined. Instances are ready, so we'll register the task. When we register a task, with the cluster, with the service, we're basically saying these are the resources in terms of CPU and RAM. This is the name of the Docker image that we're going to use. And we do that with a JSON file. I'm going to describe that particular task so we can see the CPU and RAM resources that it needs. And then I'm ready to go. So I'll start running that task. So we've now got our RobertMQ component of our application that's running on one of those R3 instances. Next thing we're going to do is launch the Redis cluster. We've already registered that with the service, so all we need to do is run the task. And what you see when that Redis cluster is launched, that in the visualization that we've got for this demo, these containers are bigger. And if we describe the Redis task, we'll see that in the definition of that task, we specified more RAM. So the EC2 container service knows the right place that it has to deploy that particular task. So, the next thing we're going to deploy is the front-end component of our application. So we'll deploy a few of them. 
We'll see them get deployed into the cluster in a, in a matter of seconds. It's a little bit difficult to see because the colors are similar. But these components of the application actually consist of two containers. If I describe what we've defined for that task, I've told the service not only things like the CPU and the RAM that I need for Nginx and the Node.js components of that application, but also it's two separate Docker images. But the service knows that they're going to be deployed together, so it takes care of making sure that they're in the right place at the right time. Finally, we're going to launch the backend processes the audio processes that are going to do the work with the audio files that users upload. So it'll take a few seconds for us to get them up. And you'll see that they are deployed across different instances. They're not just on the C3s. They're also on the R3s. Because when we describe the task, the service can make decisions about where to place them based on what we've told them about the resource requirements of those tasks. So all the piece parts of our distributed application are there now. We can do some things. We see the load. For the front end on the right, we've got a script we're going to run that will generate some HTTP traffic to increase the load on that. Once we've done that, if we want to better deal with that load, we'll launch a bunch more of the front end components of the application to deal with that. And we'll see that the load comes down as we've got more of those instances. All things that with EC2 container service are happening in a matter of seconds. We don't need that load anymore, so we will kill that script. And then as we've killed the script, we're also going to get rid of the extra containers that we don't need anymore. The last thing that we're going to show in this demo, we made some changes to the audio encoding processing part of our application. So we have a new version of that that we'd like to deploy. So we registered the new task. We told the service the resources that we need. So now we're going to deploy v2 of our audio processor. So we run that task, and then the same thing. The service knows the resource requirements for these containers, for these applications, and it puts them in the right place across our managed cluster of EC2 instances. We're going to get rid of v1 now, and we end up with the evolved version of our application. And that is the end of the, the short demonstration that we're showing you. So it's also very easy for us to say goodbye to all of the containers that we've deployed as part of this demo. Thank you very much for your service. And then we can also finish off by terminating our cluster and finishing the demonstration. So what we showed here with EC2 container service is how it's straightforward for you to take a heterogeneous cluster of EC2 instances that are managed by this service and deploy this somewhat complex distributed application. We told the service the resource requirements we needed. We told the service that certain containers needed to be deployed together. And the service took care of deploying them in the right place very quickly, making it very easy for us. We're really, really excited about this service. And we're also really excited about what you guys are going to do with it.